Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all having a great weekend. My name is Andy with Boatworks today, and in this video, well, we're going to be working on these bulkheads. We're going to get them cut, glassed, and fit. So I hope you enjoy it. But before we get started, I want to talk to you very briefly about this week's advertiser, which is Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning service that I started using about six or seven months ago, give or take. And initially it's to try and learn more about making these video, trying to make my videos better, specifically trying to get more proficient at like video editing as well as storytelling. And the more time that I spent looking around on their website, uh, I found there, there's a lot of other really, really good classes there, uh, specifically some that kind of focused on like time management and efficiency. And I'm just, I'm gonna be perfectly honest, these are all things that most people struggle with and believe me, I am no exception. <laughs> so to try and help myself improve, Skillshare is where I have been going to do this. Skillshare offers classes that's structured in a way that works for the real world. So you can progress through these classes at your own pace. So to kick this promotion off, Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership. And then after that, it's just roughly $10 a month, which when you think about it, is a really, really good deal. So click the link down below in the description and learn something new from the convenience of your own home. I mean, it just, it doesn't get any easier than that. So with that said, I wanna say thank you to Skillshare and let's get into the video. Okay, so the, the starboard side, <laughs> that's actually uh, looking like it's a pretty good fit. A little bit of rounding over left to do on, on the back side of one of the edges, just because the, the hull is kind of tapering in on, the, uh, on that side. But the, the port side, this is gonna be a little bit more work. Okay, I understand it's pretty dark in here, but something I uh, completely forgot about. Was that I still have this glass tabbing all along the top that needs to be uh, basically ground down and made gone away.
So every time I break this little guy out, I always get a ton of people asking, you know, what brand is it? Where can you get it? And I'm just going to knock that one out of the park right now. So the brand name on this is called Easy Cutter. Easy Cutter. And admittedly, it's not the easiest thing to find. I haven't spent a whole lot of time looking for other places that might carry it. But the only place that I know of offhand that does carry it is Jamestown Distributors. Now, just to be completely upfront, it's not a sales pitch. I benefit in no way whether you buy it or not. Just passing along the information because honestly, I've been using this now for ah, almost a year. And I'll admit, I was a little bit skeptical when I first kind of checked it out. I'm like, oh, well, we'll see how long this lasts. But it's been almost a year now, and I've cut a lot of glass with this thing, and it just holds up, it's been holding up like a champ. Um, last night, when I was cutting all the, uh, the, the 1708 for these bulkheads, uh, last night was probably the most cutting I've ever used this for at, at any one sitting. And in total, I ended up cutting out 12 sections of 1708, and that's quite a bit of cutting. Uh, in 12 sections of 1708, which is not the thinnest material, so it takes a little bit of effort to actually cut it. And even after those 12 sections, uh, there was still plenty of power left in this tiny little battery, which is pretty impressive. So with that said, if you want to find a little bit more information about these scissors, I will include a link down below in the description. To It'll be to Jamestown's uh, website, specifically the page that carries these scissors. So with that said, I need to start mixing up some resin because I need to get all of this glass down today both sides. So for this layup, I'm going to be using the uh, Total Boat sort of laminating resin, which means it doesn't contain any wax. Now, there's a couple reasons that I'm, I'm going with this versus, say, epoxy. Uh, main one being is that uh, I'm looking to get, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get the glass laid up on both of these panels on you know, each face today, and then hopefully before I have to leave, be able to flip these over and then get the other sides glassed as well, yet today. Uh, if I were to use uh, epoxy, um, that wouldn't happen. It just, it, it wouldn't set up that fast. I mean, it would be fully cured by morning, but that wouldn't do me any good for, it wouldn't give me the possibility of being able to flip these over and get the other side done yet today. I still don't know that I'm going to be able to do that with using the poly, uh, but at least it stacks the cards in my favor. At least I'm going to have a better chance of that happening. But the main, so the other reason for using poly is it's less expensive than, than epoxy. Uh, this is quite a bit of glass going down, and when you kind of multiply that over 12 sections of 1708, which tend to, you, you know, suck up a lot of resin, uh, there's quite a bit of money saved there. That's the reason I'm using the poly for... It's, it's thawing outside and I got snow falling off the roof. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but anyways. So, it may, so that's the reason I'm uh, going with the poly on this. So with that said, uh, I'm going to start getting these mixed up. Like I said, I'm going to be mixing up, uh, catalyzing this at 2%. So uh, I'm going to be doing 16 ounce batches at a time, uh, at least to start to get a feel for how fast this is all going to get wet out. But at 16 ounces of resin, I'm going to be putting in 10 cc's of MEC or methyl ethyl ketone with peroxide.
So I've gotten all the, all the glass laid up on the back side of these two panels. And in total, I think I went through mm, about half to three quarters of a gallon of, uh, of laminating poly. And it's been sitting now for uh, about an hour or so, and it's slightly tacky. So what I'm going to do is, uh, because I'm still hoping to be able to flip these around and get the other side done yet today, uh, I want to get these coated with gel coat so that that can start setting up and also cure off this resin. And this is, lamin or this is actually not laminating gel coat. This is actually gel coat with the wax. So this is a flow coat or essentially a, a finishing gel coat. He's a little ripe in here this morning. You can take care of that one. That's better. <laughs> you know, I just want to kind of mention that real quick. Uh, I get a lot of comments people saying that the way that I, when I'm laying out my glass, I'm being kind of careless because I'm never wearing a mask. Well, in here I don't necessarily have to because of that air exchange unit. Uh, basically the way that that's working is every bit of air is exchanged every four minutes. Every bit of air in this building is exchanged every four minutes. So uh, it's somewhat like a spray booth, not quite, but it's pretty close. <laughs> bit of a zoom so you can kind of see how things turned out here. Uh, laminates look consistent top and bottom. Good contact. I'm not seeing any kind of separation between the, uh, what the hell is this shit called? Kusa. <laughs> I'm not seeing any kind of separation between the Kusa and the actual glass. All right, now I was going for a finished thickness of three quarters of an inch and I'll, I'll kind of go over why when we get up on the boat. And uh, I'm actually, I'm right about there. Sweet. All right, so this is all fine and dandy and all, but it doesn't matter if it doesn't fit. Now, because um, I have a, some small concerns because this is thicker than the originals. The originals were half inch thick. 
Uh, this being three quarter, you know, a little bit, a uh, little bit more beef to it. Uh, it. It should drop in, but I'm not. Again, it's one of those things you don't know until you know. So uh, let me move things around and try and get these up on the boat and see how it looks. Getting cozy in here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just real quick, uh, the main reason I wanted to increase the thickness of these bulkheads was because the originals, they didn't come down plumb. They were actually angled in slightly. So like when you were standing right here between them and looking at it, you could see there was just a, a slight angle coming in. And that bothered me. <laughs> so now the way that these bulkheads are mounted, the, the bottom edge rests against this lip right here, whereas the top edge comes in behind this... Uh, top area of the, of, the, of the helm. So basically by increasing the thickness, that's going to push this edge out a little bit more and it's going to bring this top back a little bit more. And I think that's going to be just about enough to actually bring it in so it's going to look perfectly plumb coming down. But all right, let's see if we can get this thing tucked in here. <laughs> <laughs> so, a little bit of a whoopsie. <laughs> uh, not a big deal. I, I initially put them in backwards, uh, but luckily that is an easy fix. So right now they're finally you know where they need to be. They're each on the correct side and the fit looks good. It wasn't too much of a struggle to get them in and it fixed actually two issues that I was having with the old bulkheads. The first one uh, obviously was more of a cosmetic thing, but all of the, all the veneer on the exterior was delaminated, it was peeling off and bubbled, and it's just, it, just, it looked kind of like that cheap retro, like 70s look, and fake wood, hated it. So, but it was delaminating, so, you know, that's, that's reason alone to, to remake the bulkheads. <laughs> but aesthetically, for me, it corrected the issue of these not coming down plumb. And right now, having that little bit of added thickness, kick the top forward, and it kicked the bottom half aft so it just kind of brought things into line so that that uh, that part I'm very very happy with now these bulkheads are not done they still need to get fared and smoothed and potentially primed I'm not sure if I'm gonna prime them in place you know prime and paint in place or if I'm gonna do that uh, separate and try to sneak it in without anything getting scratched uh, I know which way would be safer um, but I haven't quite decided that but that's gonna have to wait until a later video so for right now I think I'm gonna call these bulkheads done at least for this week now, next week, I'm going to have to come in and do all the fairing on here and get them prepped for, uh, for priming and paint, as well as get these lids actually fared in and get those ready for prime and paint. Uh, that's going to have to wait until next week. And so, for right now, I think I'm going to button this up. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell. Thank you in advance. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, you can leave those down below. And as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. This has been a Boatworks Today Projection.